the rest of the story. It was late in the gray, drizzly midsummer afternoon, but the two boys, Henri Pochette and his cousin, both of them 15, hurried to the Petersburg Golf Club, hoping to squeeze in nine before nightfall. The course was crowded that day. There was no thunder, after all, and the golfers in those parts are accustomed to summer rain, but such familiarity sometimes breeds peril. The boys had completed two holes. They were attacking a third when lightning struck the top of a tall pine nearby. And the fireball shot down the trunk and across the damp fairway where it knocked on Repocheté to the ground. The teenager, dazed, struggled to his feet, squinted through blurry eyes, searching for his cousin. There, about 50 yards away, he lay, struck by the same rolling charge only closer to the smoldering pine. Henri scrambled to his side. His companion was unconscious, eyes rolled back, tongue down his throat. The lightning had disintegrated his shoes, burned the clothing from his body. He appeared to be dead. The golf clubs he'd been carrying were lying on the ground not far away. The irons actually welded together in nature's forge. Henri screamed to the indifferent trees, Somebody help! Well, it so happened the two doctors had been playing on an adjacent fairway, and they answered the boys' cries. And after making certain the stricken youngster was breathing, they carried him to a car. Later in the intensive care unit of the nearest hospital, Henri's cousin regained consciousness. His skin was blackish. He smelled of sulfur. His watch band was melted to his wrist. Blades of grass still clung to his body, but he was alive. Was even speaking now. The doctors had only begun to assess the injuries. One worries about the lungs first. A lightning victim may appear only a little singed on the outside while burying second degree burns in the lungs. But this particular young victim was comparatively fortunate. An insignificant heart murmur, a ruptured eardrum, and that was about all of the lasting damage that he had to show for his harrowing experience. But there was yet another after effect of the lightning strike which the boy's mother was first to note. It was his personality. Whereas before the ordeal, he was an impulsive, high-spirited youngster. Ever afterward, he was low-key, methodical, utterly imperturbable, as though the fire from heaven had changed his mind. Once upon an apparent overnight sensation, there was a professional golfer from South Africa named Retief Goosen. Surprise winner of golf's prestigious 2001 United States Open. And then the surprise winner of the same event yesterday at Shinnecock. He did it again, the United States Open. And he won it, he said, not merely due to his golfing skills, but mainly because of his incredible composure wherever disaster threatened. His almost surreal nonchalance as the whole world watched him draw nearer every golfer's dream. And it was mentioned once or twice by incredulous sportscasters that some 19 years previous, the unflappable Retief Goosen, playing golf with a cousin in South Africa, had been struck by lightning. Well, that is so. And now you know the rest of the story.